of earnest praying believers should encircle the world. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to our 40 days of prayer. My name is Leishiren Ragui, and I'm joining you from Bangkok, Thailand, representing Malaysia. We would like to welcome you people from all over the world. During this time, we will have a short time of worship, followed by a message from the Word of God presented to us by Pastor Don Mac Larry. If you wanted to, you can turn on your cameras. And also, we would like to encourage you to have your Bibles ready because Pastor Don will invite us to read from our scriptures today. Before we begin, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love and care, and thank you for this beautiful time that we can come before you to worship your name. Please be with us now as we pray to you. All these things we ask in your loving name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, before we ask Pastor Dawn to share with us, let us have a time of worship, and I now invite Sister Louisa to take us through a time of thanksgiving. Sister Louisa. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. For our Thanksgiving verse, we are going to read in Philippians chapter 4, 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known into, unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, do you know that thanking God, what no matter what, can strengthen us, it can give us joy, it can heal us our depression, it can allow us to overcome all kinds of negative emotions. As we thank the Lord, even before we receive the answer to our prayers, we are at peace that God heard us and that He has He had answered all our prayers. I just would like to invite everyone to please share your thanks. But before you do so, you can um, share your thanks in the chat later. Let me share mine. I just would like to be thankful to God for the healing power that He has and for helping us, sustaining us in our ministry here in M-Shine. M-Shine is a ministry that um, teach children just in our home. And in this ministry, we are not just teaching the kids, but at the same time, even their parents. Uh, there are some some of our student mom who has been vaccinated from being Christian, but after coming to this ministry, she made a decision to come back mm -hmm. to God. And just this week, some of our new student parents, they are from Buddhist background. And as they see how we, we, we talk, how we deal with their children, they realize that they need to teach their children. They need to practice gentleness and patience in their homes. It was really good because we are eventually, we are teaching the kids, but at the same time, their parents also are learning. And you could see these Buddhist families, 
literally bowing their heads, folding their hands, and asking God, praying to God as well. I'm just, I'm just really, really thankful. And so right now, I would like to invite everyone, please share your thanksgiving in the chat. Thank you. Yes, Sister Myra said, I thank God for directing me to read the Bible and accept the fruit of the Sabbath. Also for helping her overcome all her difficulties in relationship. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, God, for life. That's so true. Thank you for his love. Thank you for his blessings. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, there are so much things to be thankful. And for that, I just would like to leave you all in prayer. Dear God in heaven, thank you that you are powerful enough to take good care of us. Thank you for everything, all the good things and mercy, especially for your love that endures forever. Amen. Thank you so much and God bless us all. Let's continue to be thankful because God deserves all our thanks. Thank you. At this time, I just would like to hand over to our um, the presider. Thank you, Sister Lay. My name is Deborah Sims, and I am joining you from Ottawa, Ontario, the nation's capital of Canada. Brothers and sisters, holy angels sing around God's throne with great joy, offering their endless praise and most exalted praise as well. We are privileged to join them at this time. Yes, we have thanked him for what he has done for us, and now we desire to praise him for who he is. We praise his character, his attributes, his identity, his sovereignty, and his personal nature. It is written, make a joyful shout to God all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Oh, bless our God, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. And we are told in Sons and Daughters of God, page 327, <laughs> paragraph 4, the thought that Christ died to obtain for us the gift of everlasting life is enough to call forth from our hearts and lips the most sincere and fervent gratitude, and from our lips, the most enthusiastic praise. My friends, with reverent joy, let us praise the Lord. I want to praise the Lord because he is my guide in every step of my journey heavenward. My brothers and sisters, for the next three minutes, our host will separate us into little groups in the breakout rooms where I invite each one of you to share your praises. And while we're waiting, What are you praising God for? I praise Good Jesus. morning. Good morning. Hi, Sister Barbara, Ashim Cake, Autumn, and Belmira. Yes, let's start praising Jesus. I praise Jesus for um, for being my sustainer. I thank God for waking me up today, for give you know providing for me i have not worked these what three weeks now i only work yes on tuesday four hours so i'm trying to find another job work job i work at david's bridal and you know god has kept me especially from this covid me and my husband and we are we go to church and we are you know we are active we busy we doing and so I praise God for keeping me and keeping our family. So we know that God is good and is faithful. Amen. Thank him for Amen. his faithfulness. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. How about you, Sister Ashimwe? Hello. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. I'm called Ashimwe from Rwanda, Kigali. I have a lot to thank God for. I thank God for my life. I thank God for the life of my children and my family. I thank God for his providence. I thank God that he has protected my children at school and they are done with exams, some, though others are still continuing. I have so many things to thank God for. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, we have a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. Yes. How about you, Sister Abiola? <laughs> I'm thankful to God for his keeping power that has kept me throughout the working hours and for protecting me. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I Praise God because He is my peace. Amen. Praise the Lord. I praise Jesus Amen. that He's always the quiet in the storm. Amen. Amen. I praise God because He is a God that does not all. Jeffrey, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. Unmute. Thank praise you. the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. Welcome mm -hmm. back to the main room. Indeed, the Lord deserves all our praises. We ask that he educates our hearts and lips you, to praise the Lord. We will now give the time to Sister Abiola King for confession. Yeah. Um, I am done. Sorry. Thank you so much, Sister Deborah Sims, for living, right. leading us in our session of praise. We now invite Sister Abiola King to lead us in our prayer of confession. Thank you, Sister Lay. I'm joining you from Guyana in South America, and I'm representing Team Malaysia. Isn't it great, brothers and sisters, that we have a God who's faithful to forgive? It says in his word, if we confess our sins, he is, faith, sorry, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, I confess that I haven't spent enough time in your word as I should. At this time, we'll invite you to have silent confession with your mics muted. We'll have one minute for the time of confession silently and privately.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who's faithful to forgive. Lord, you've heard our confession. Please, Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, Lord, and blot out all our sins and forgive all our iniquities. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you as we accept your forgiveness. In your son's name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. 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 Sister Lay, over back to you. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Sister Louisa, for helping us with our Thanksgiving. Thank you for Sister Deborah Sims with our praise, Sister Abiola King for our confession. And at this time, we would like to give our introduction to our pastor, Don Mac Lafferty. Pastor, we now give you the time. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody from the beautiful hills of Tennessee. And I don't see any faces this morning. So if you're able to go on video, I am going to do a quick uh, activity with you again with the hopes and prayers that you can do this activity with, with all the generations that you have influence with to get them into the book of Acts. And more importantly, not just into the book of Acts, but to live according to the spirit of God as the word of God tells us. So this morning, please draw a quick picture of a car. Now, don't worry if your car looks better than mine. I'll rejoice. That's good. <laughs> and it can look worse than mine, and I'll still rejoice. But just draw a quick picture of a car. And you can do any kind of car. And I'll give you just a moment. And then I have a lead question for you. You can ask this question to children, teens, young and old. I'll give you just about 30 seconds. You have to draw really, really fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. While you're drawing, sometimes we push the word of God onto the younger generations without giving them an opportunity to have something to connect with, something that the Holy Spirit can use to prep their heart for the word of God. So you don't have to use art. Art is just a way that can get kids of all ages, including us as adults, thinking about the context before we go to the word of God. So does anybody have a picture of a car to put up to the screen real quick? I'm seeing some. You have to put it up to the camera so we can see. Ah, I'm seeing some beautiful cars. Oh, wow. Deborah, I can't wait to drive in your car. That's wonderful. Suzanne, okay. And Jen and Audrey. I'm seeing all of these different ones. Lorna, uh, Ellie. Okay, and more. Hope. Okay, good. Uh, Lazarina, good. So I see more and more putting them up. Now, my friends, my friends, look at this car, the car that you put. And the question I have for anybody in your home that's watching right now, where do you prefer to ride in the car? Do you prefer to be in the driver's seat where the steering wheel is? Do you prefer to be next to that? My, my daddy used to say when I was in this, when he was driving, he would say, if you sit next to me, you're the co-pilot. Do you want to be in the back seat? Where do you want to be when you go in someone's car? Do you prefer to drive or be in the co-pilot place or in the back seat and why? Please go to chat real quick. I'm going to take a few answers very, very fast to just get us thinking this morning. Driver's seat, of course. Okay, tell me why you pick what you pick to do. Most people are saying they like to be the driver. So tell me why you like to be in the spot you're riding on chat. Okay, co-pilot. I get to help direct, but not in charge. Huh? Okay, driver's seat. I'm most confident with my own driving. Okay, good. <laughs> driver to be in control. Uh, short distance to admire the scenery. I like to be, oh, you're going so fast. I can't even read. Co-pilot because I feel nauseated in the back. Uh, the co-driver, the co-pilot, if it's not my car, they are more comfortable driving. Uh, look at all these different answers. Good, good. Thank you for sharing, my friends. Uh, one said, I don't drive, so I am the co-pilot. 
<laughs> okay, good. Thank you, everybody. Now, this morning, this morning, I remind us, those of us who are joining me last night here on this line, that we were studying in the book of Acts, the part of Peter's sermon where Peter was declaring Christ as Lord. Are you with me, everybody? Christ as Lord. That was the last session. And that was in Acts 2. In verse 36, he declared that Jesus is both Lord and Christ. Now, you might wonder, what on earth does that picture of the car have to do with this lesson coming up? Well, you're about to see. After Peter declared that Jesus is Lord and Christ, the people were cut to the heart or pierced to the heart, it says in verse 37. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren, what shall we do? Now, let's stop for a moment. If you are a kid, I see a kid here this morning. That's wonderful on Jen and Andre's picture there. So good morning to the, to the one kid on this morning. I wave to, you want to give a wave to the one child we have here? Give a wave to that, that one little one there. We're thankful you're here. You're getting waved at from all around the world, by the way, all around the world. <laughs> now, my friends, if when we think about the picture of the car, and who is driving, let's imagine that that car is your life. Are you with me? Let's imagine that the car is your life. And the question again is, is who's driving this morning? When Peter was talking to the crowd, many of which, by the way, had been involved in shouting, crucify him, crucify him to Jesus, the very one who had fed them and done the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. He had healed many of them. Many of those same people had cried, crucify him, crucify him. And when, when Peter proclaimed that Jesus is not only your friend and not only your savior, but he is also your Lord, meaning king of kings, Lord of lords, that there's no one higher than Christ Jesus. That is what cut them to their heart. And that's why they cried out because they said, what should we do? My friends, sometimes as Seventh-day Adventists, we are sitting in the pew Sabbath by Sabbath. We're rejoicing in the friendship of Jesus. We're rejoicing in Jesus as Savior. But we haven't, we haven't received Christ the Lord to be over everything, to be the master of everything. And when they cried out to Peter in Acts 2, and they said, what shall we do? What's the very first word that Peter said in verse 38? Repent. What's the very first word? Repent. 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 Now, I mentioned this the other day when we were talking about how to ask for and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But today we go deeper in repentance. Now, repentance is not a popular word. It's not something we like to hear about, if we're really honest. But repentance is a precious word. It's a beautiful word when we know where it comes from and who is the one who helps us repent. So repentance, again, a quick way to tell kids or people of all ages, I need everybody to turn to your left. Now, this will be funny online. Okay, but we'll just try this anyway. So just turn to your left. Okay, repentance is... If you're going this way and, and the Holy Spirit convicts you you're going the wrong way, it means doing an about face and going the opposite direction, right? <laughs> and so repentance is doing a full turnaround. So if I had a room full of kids or teenagers, I would ask, ask them to stand up and I would say, are you pathfinders? I'd say, if you're a pathfinders, tell me what, show me what an about face is. About face means if you're going this way, you turn all the way back. You don't just go part way. Mm -hmm. My friends, sometimes I have been convicted of something and I've done a part way turn. Have you? Yes. Have you ever been convicted? Like your attitude is out of place or your yeah. something is wrong and what, what you're doing and you're convicted, but you kind of want to do your own thing. So you just adjust a little. That's mm -hmm. not repentance. Repentance is about face like the pathfinders say if you're going one way you go totally opposite way you run to jesus christ now the question is if we are someone that loves to be in the driver's seat now many of you said you like to be in the driver's seat right 
You'd love to be in the driver's seat. But let's think about our life. If you like being in the driver's seat in your life, you like to choose your attitude uh, yourself. You like to have whatever attitude you want, not what God wants. You like to you like to go where you want to go in this day. Have your agenda, not God's agenda. My friends, this is what all of us are like without the Holy Spirit, right? This is what all of us are like when we when we don't have Christ as Lord. We like to hold on to the drivers. Uh, to the the wheel, I should say, and we like to drive, and we like to drive as the way we want to drive. My friends, uh, one time when I was sharing this illustration, some of you have heard this, but I was in a very difficult country where it's where it's very dangerous to be a follower of Jesus, and they had invited me to go down, down deep below the ground where we could meet and talk about what it means to follow Jesus safely. And there were two deacons by the door and they had to ask, since they didn't know me, they weren't going to let me in right away. They didn't know, was I someone dangerous? Because they didn't know me. And the the pastor beside me, the Seventh Day Adventist pastor said, oh, he's with us. And he whispered to the deacons. And so the deacons opened the doors and I went in, they closed the doors and they stood in front of the doors like this, keeping it very safe for all the believers. Isn't that an interesting way to worship Jesus? Mm-hmm. That's what they had to do. In that setting, I was I put two chairs in front of, of the assembled believers. And I said, this is the driver's seat on this side, this chair. This one is the co-pilot seat. I need a volunteer. A big man came up and I said, if this was a Ferrari, you know, a sports car, where would you like to sit? And the big man said, in his own language, they had to interpret for me. He said, I don't want to sit next to the driver's seat. I want to be in the driver's seat. I want to drive. I said, okay, my friend, why don't you drive? So he was going like this and acting like he was going around the curves fast and all of that. And I said, now imagine that you, my friend, want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, not just your friend. Where would you sit? If the car, the Ferrari was your life and the big man said, well, of course, I need to not sit on the driver's seat. And so he stood up and he plunked himself down right beside it in the co-pilot seat. (laughs) I said, my friend, I said, that's that sounds good. I said, now imagine if Jesus is going really, really fast in this time of your life. Do you know what I'm saying, my friends? Like, do you ever have a time where Jesus is leading you and you feel like he's going too fast around the corner? Do you ever have a time? How many of you know what I'm saying? When, it, when you feel like he's stretching your faith and you're, and you're wanting him to slow down. Have you ever said that? Jesus, can we just slow down a little bit? You're, 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 you're taking me around the corner too fast. I said to the big man sitting in the co-pilot seat, if, this, if Jesus was leading in your life this way, And with this illustration of the car, and you felt like Jesus was taking you too fast around the corners of life. He was testing your faith too fast. What would you do? The big man, he leaned back like this, and he put his foot out. And he said, I would put my foot on the brakes. I would say, excuse me, Jesus, I need to put on the brakes right now. Slow down. I said, "Mm, uh uh-huh. And I said, what would you do, my friend? If Jesus was taking you through a difficult time in your life, a time of pain, a time of agony, a time of testing, and and uh, uh, what if you wanted to get out of that time faster because it was too painful? What would you do? He said, well, I would put my foot on the gas pedal and I would say, speed up, Lord Jesus. Get me out of this time in my life. <laughs> mm. How many of you relate to that as well? When you're going through suffering and you want it to be over, like already, like not tomorrow, but over now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. My friends, the, the audience down below the ground that was watching this man, they were listening very intently. And I said, my friends, sometimes as Seventh-day Adventist followers of Jesus, we pride ourselves that we are no longer in the driver's seat. But we sit in the co-pilot seat 
And we find ourselves interrupting the driving of Jesus in these last days anytime we don't like the way he drives. Are you following me in this illustration? And I find that sometimes the Seventh-day Adventists, blessed with this last day message for a last day people, we say, oh, Jesus is Lord. We have that all covered already. No problem. But when Jesus says, sell your home and go to such and such a place and serve me, we say, oh, oh I, what if I lose money on, the, on this deal? Or if Jesus says, I want, you to, I want you to leave your work and go work for me somewhere else. We say, ah, but I have security or position in this work. Or if Jesus says to us, uh, I want you to change your entertainment because it's not pleasing to me. Ah, but God, I serve you all during the day. When I come home, I like to do my own thing. Are you tracking with me, my friends? You see, to be in the, the co-pilot seat is it actually a dangerous place for God's remnant people to be because we can stop him. We can, we can try to stop him. We can try to speed him up. We can even seize the wheel because we're right next and we can pull the, the car of our life the, another way. I was doing this illustration with that family back, not family, but the people down below ground that I was telling you about when a little boy raised his hand like this shyly, he raised his hand and he said, <clears throat> he said in his own language, <clears throat> Pastor Don, he said, I have a recommendation. He said, very, very grown up wise. He was probably about seven years old. And I said, yes, sir. I said, where do you think this big man that's driving in this car should be? He said, hmm, he scratched his chin as if he had whiskers, but he wouldn't have whiskers for many years. And he scratched his chin like this. And he said, well, I think that big man should be in the trunk. Why should he be in the trunk, my young friend? I asked him in front of all the adults. And a little boy, he was excited. He said, he should be in the trunk. Because when you're in the trunk, you give up where Jesus takes you on the road. You give up being able to see. You can't even see where Jesus takes you. You have to trust him where he's taking you. What do you say, my friends? Do you agree? Amen. Amen. Now, my friends, my friends, Amen. the next thing to do. Amen. The next thing to do right now is a very serious thing. I invite you to just take one or two minutes and let's get down on our knees in front of a chair. So I'm going to get off my chair. So I have a little chair I'm sitting on right here. I am going to, to get off the chair and I'm going to go on my knees in front of the chair. Will you do that for a second? Here's what I invite you to do. Let's have silent prayer right now and ask Jesus our Lord and Savior. Say, Jesus, when it comes to my life, am I in the driver's seat? Am I in the co-pilot seat just interrupting you sometimes? Or am I truly in the trunk where I've given up the right to drive to you fully? I invite you just to have this quiet conversation with Jesus right now. And then uh, don't worry about the time. Just in about a minute or so, when you hear me call you back, then we'll come back to the word, okay? So I'll see you in one minute. Amen. Amen. Now, you can, you can have longer on your own, but of course, I, I don't make it real long because we have all these ages here. But I, I invite you to go to chat right now, and I'll take just a moment. Where did Jesus impress you you are? And, uh, and maybe one 
or a couple few words you can say after it. And why did you say that? So do you think you're in the driver's seat this morning, co-pilot, or in the trunk? Okay, co-pilot says one. Co-pilot is a very easy place for us to be, right, everybody? Wouldn't you say? Very easy to be there. Uh, in the boot, okay, co-pilot, co-pilot, in the trunk. Jesus, take the wheel. I'm in the back seat. Your know, back seat's pretty good, but sometimes you can still reach in and interfere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the trunk, in the trunk, co-pilot. But I desire to be in the trunk. Ah, yeah. Good, good. All over the place. Yeah. You know what? What the Holy Spirit impressed me uh, right now this morning? Now, he's had to get me out of the driver's seat and the co-pilot many times. How about you? Many times he's had to yeah. he's had to confront me on that. This morning he said, "Don, you are in the trunk right now, but sometimes you are are banging on the trunk like you want to get my attention that you want to get out of the trunk sometimes." <laughs> so, <laughs> and so my friends, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Don't we all need to repent from trying to drive? Don't yes. we all? Do you agree? Yes. The question is, the question is, how do we repent when when we feel like we have no strength, no power to repent? And how do we do that? Now, we've already talked about Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. We know that Jesus can give us a new heart. There is a truth that goes along with that and even goes deeper than the heart surgery of the other day. There is something that uh, I found in scripture that I wish I would have understood as a child. As a teenager, as a university student, as a young adult, newly married, I wish I would have understood this precious truth we're about to go to right now. There is a secret to repenting that I'm still learning like a little kid because I've only discovered it maybe the last seven years of my life. So I'm still learning it. And do you want to learn something very precious about repenting? A secret to repenting? Yes. Please open the word of God to Colossians 1 27. You've heard me reference this. I'm going to now come from another angle. Colossians 1 27. In Colossians 1 27, I need a volunteer. Uh, I want to know if Matthew Walter from Papua New Guinea, my brother, would you read Colossians 1 27 if you don't mind? Yes, I'm happy to read the best to every one of us. Uh, let me just get my Bible and uh, confirm Colossians. Yes, I'm here now. Okay. Can I have an amen to, from everyone if you already? Amen. 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 Uh, listen very carefully as I read the New King James Version. This is uh, mm -hmm. what the Bible says. To them, God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. 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 Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. And by the way, Matthew, if, if God allows it, I hope someday to see you in New Guinea before Jesus comes, if he so wills. If he yes, wills. Uh, I, I so, would I'd love to see you all as well. Thank you. Praise God. And if not, we all get to see Matthew in heaven by God's grace. Amen. Now, my friends, <laughs> my friends, now get ready to draw something. This is very, very important and, and very simple. Again, I'm hoping you can take this illustration and share it with others. On the left-hand side of a clean sheet of paper, so on the left-hand side right here, please draw a quick stick figure of someone who is only about half the height of the page, and he or she should be facing this way, okay? So draw a quick stick figure of someone about half the height of the page facing this way. And put your name under that little stick figure. So I'm putting Dawn. That's my first name. Okay. Okay. Now, on the other side of the page facing you, please put another stick figure, just head and shoulders, not, not twice as high, but just like head and shoulders above you, facing you, okay? And put, put a mean-looking face on that, that one right there, okay? So a mean-looking face, okay? 
And now, and let's put on that one, let's label it uh, tempter. Tempter. Okay, the one who tempts you. Okay, so you should have something like this. Are we together? So put yourself, put your first name here, and, and put the tempter. Now, my friends, many times we wonder why we can't repent. We, we are facing uh, the tempter, the devil, the adversary, uh, and he is head and shoulders bigger than us. When we face him alone, we will always fail in the temptation when we face him alone. When we face him alone, he will come at us with exactly the kind of temptation that he knows will lead to you and me falling. Are you tracking with me? Yes. He is ingenious, but I don't want to give him glory because Colossians 1.27 that Matthew just read gives us a truth that we have often lost sight of. Where does Christ live right now? By faith? In our, in our heart in our heart now this might be a little bit messy to draw but let me show you just a simple way to do this again where you can do this for for children or in the age but you can draw a picture of a heart let me show you a way to do it okay so you draw the picture of the heart with part of you in it like this so you're in it, and in that heart, please put a very, very, very tall Jesus that is represented as more than head and shoulders taller than you or the adversary. And please label it Jesus, Jesus. Now, this is a so this is my simple way of doing this. I'll, I'll show you mine. You can draw better with more time, but this is what I'm talking about. You see what I'm doing here? Here's me. Here's the one that comes against me. But here's the one who lives in my heart by faith. Amen. Now, why is this such a big deal? Now, I'm just going to put this up here to the screen. You don't need to see me right now. I want you to track. Matthew just read from the word of God. That Christ in you, the hope of glory, not a hope, the hope of glory. He's our hope. Amen, everybody. He's our absolute hope. Now, we have often acted that after we receive Jesus Christ into our heart as our Savior, like we do a check on the box and act like he's not there anymore. You know what I'm saying? My friends, when we receive Jesus Christ in our heart, like Revelation 3.20, where Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and what? And knock. Mm -hmm. he, we, when we invite him in, he comes into fellowship. In Revelation 3.20, he says he comes in to, to like eat with you at the table. Amen? Yes. To be with you all the time. Not to be a guest in your heart, but to be a resident in your heart. Here's the precious thing about this. So when you invite Jesus Christ in your heart, he is way, way more than head and shoulders higher than the devil or Satan. Oh, Jesus Christ is infinitely taller and stronger and more magnificent and all powerful than any force of darkness. Now, you might say, okay, that's nice. That's poetic. That's a nice thing for children to know that Jesus lives in your heart. Yes, it is nice for children to know. It's nice for everybody to remember. It's actually pivotal to remember that, the, that not only is the lamb who takes away the sin of the world lives right here in your heart, in my heart, but what is also Jesus called? In contrast to the lamb, he's also called what? Help me out, somebody. The lion. lion of Judah. He's called the lion of Judah. And the lion of Judah is not ever afraid of who is growling around you. You know, it's true that, that the devil goes around like a roaring lion. This is according to the word of God, right? Yes. He does go like a, like a roaring lion. But Jesus is the lion, not a lion. He is the lion of Judah. And the lion of Judah lives in your heart and my heart. 
And when Satan comes lurking around, slinking around, trying to scare us, trying to make us afraid, trying to make us run the wrong way, we say, Jesus, we've already surrendered this day to you. Our heart is yours. Jesus, you be my Lion of Judah, and you take care of the adversary for me because I have no power. I will fail without you. But with you, I will not fail because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords knows no failure. He's never been defeated. And Jesus Christ never will be defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we go right now to our breakout rooms. And we take eight minutes. Eight minutes. Listen, let's say ten minutes. Let's come to him right now. And let's surrender to him. Let's repent to Christ. And in our weakness, let's say, God, we don't have power to repent, but you, Father God, have given us Jesus as a lion of Judah. And so in his power, we repent. In his grace, we, we repent. In his righteousness, we repent. Amen? Amen? Let's do that right now for the next 10 minutes, and then we'll come together to close. Stephen 10. Maria, can you hear me? Yes, please. Do you want to lead us in prayer? And then we'll pray with whoever yes, else please. joins us. Yes, please. Father in heaven, we are so thankful for your admonition, for your correction in righteousness that we can be totally furnished. I want to come before you this morning, Father. Thank you for the privilege, first of all, to come because you say that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all our righteousness. But I must confess that many times I want to be in the driver's seat of my life. And Father, I come in and seek your re repentance, the gift of repentance this morning, Father, for this great sin. And Lord, I really desire for me and for us to not just be in the, as the child rightly said, to be in the trunk, but not in the trunk, beating on the trunk, but in the trunk, trusting your goodness and grace. Help us, Lord, that this illustration will not be just an exercise for this morning, but this will be a new life in Christ, abundant and free. We give you praise and thanks for who the sun sets free. We are free indeed. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 We have somebody else online here in this breakout room, and it says the letter J. Would you like to pray also? It says letter J. Would you like to pray, my friend? I see, I see another person joining us, but I don't see a face. If you'd like to pray, go ahead. I'll give you a moment. I guess they're not they're not praying, so that's okay. Uh, Maria, we can we can pray. Maria, we can pray back and forth, okay? Yes, please. I'll pray next. Dear God in heaven, I also come before your throne, Father. And it's so easy to be in the driver's seat. It's even sometimes easier as Seventh day Adventists who know the truth for me to be in the co-pilot seat, thinking that I've given up that 
royal position to you, but deceiving myself by wanting to intervene in your leading. God, have mercy on me this morning. I repent of being in either seat, and I ask, Father, not in my power, but in the power of Christ who dwells in me by his power, by his righteousness. Put me willingly into the trunk of the car, the the trunk of the car where I can just say, Jesus, lead on, O King Eternal. Lead to the left or to the right. Go faster or slower at this time in my life according to your will, not my will. God, hear our prayers as we pray back and forth this morning, seeking you and seeking the the abundant leadership and command of Christ the King. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our Father, even as we read in Acts chapter 2, 37, where when they heard these great truths, they were cut to the heart. We are praying, Lord, that you would cut away the stoniness of our heart, the stubbornness, the self-will of our hearts, and you would give us hearts that are pliable, receptive to the working of your Holy Spirit, the deep working. And Lord, and we seek, we really desire to have genuine, the gift of genuine repentance, which you so much Mm -hmm. want to give us. And we thank you because you say, if, if you want, if men, who are even all to give good gifts, you are giving us the gift of your Holy Spirit because when he, the spirit of truth is come, he is going to lead us into all truth out of that pertains to godliness and godliness. And we desire to be a reflection of your glory, we pray and give thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, Maria. And Maria, let's now think about people uh, in our lives, in our country. Uh, Where are you from, by the way? Barbados. Oh, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's think about other people that we can pray for in our families and friend uh, friendship circles or in our church. And let's pray for uh, the joy of repentance in all of us. Amen. Dear God in heaven, dear God in heaven, I cry out to you not only that I would live a daily life of repentance, but bless my family members today with the joy of repentance through the strength of Christ. Bless my friends, those that are close to you and those that are far away from you on this morning to have the joy of repentance. Um, Bless my church family that they will have the joy of repentance. Oh God, uh, we cry out to you. Move in the hearts of us as a people and also all of us online this morning. Speak to our hearts this morning that it's not about our power to repent. Is about Christ's power who lives in us. He gives us power to repent. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Father, as we continue in thy presence, we are so very thankful that you have called us into the ministry of reconciliation, Father, and we can present others before you. And I want to present my family before you. Father, I want to present the family of God before you. Lord, I pray that I want to present, Father, our conference, the East Caribbean conference, Father, of our leadership before you. And Father, we are praying and claiming that we be a people seeking you earnestly, Father, because you say that if we seek you, you want to be found of us. And if you say if we seek you with all our heart, we shall surely find you. Give us such a heart to seek after you so that we can have that wonderful relationship, making you Lord of our lives, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God, I do take this opportunity to pray with and for my sister in Barbados. God, uh, maybe Barbados already has revival. I don't know. But if if there's not revival, if there's need for more revival, then pour out your spirit like a river right now as Maria and I are praying and do a mighty work, and do this work in your daughter, Maria, and make her an ambassador for the kingdom of God in her neighborhood, in her community, in her city, in her church, in her country. Uh, Pour out your spirit on her and make her fearless to call out to people and say, ah, Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. Jesus is the power to repent. Give her such a winsome way, such a a way full of the love of the Father 
that people will be drawn to want to to repent because of the love of the Father in her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Father, I just want to say how, how wonderful we are as a family because, Lord, even here in Barbados, with our small um, group, Lord, that was, was um, praying from since 2020, the revival plan. I know, Lord, we are praying, Lord, the 40 days, and, and we have listened to your servant, Pastor Mark Lafferty, Lord, even the testimony with it is written and have been so tremendously blessed and now being privileged Father, to come into this little room with this morning. Father, pray that you will bless his ministry indeed that, Father, wherever you may call him to go, he will say, here I am, Lord, send me. And Lord, the ministry, Lord, of revival and reformation will take hold in this country of ours. And Father, throughout the Caribbean, and through, Father, the continents and the isles and islands of this earth, Father, because you say that you want to have your glory, Father, in all the world, Father, we live in, Father, according to the light, and we can be like, there, stop, but here's the your coming, that many will come to know you, come to know his life eternity, we pray, and give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hmm. That was good timing. We uh, we just we finished just in time. God. Marie, it's Amen. a joy to pray with you. God bless Thank you, my sister. You too. Bye bye. Okay, everyone. Looks like we're almost back. Okay, my friends. As we conclude, you know, in the book of Acts, it was a time of repentance. People kept coming into the church, but also the believers themselves, they lived repentance. And Jesus is looking for a people today who will live repentance. If, if this represented something evil in your life, okay, just to make an object lesson. If this represented something evil in life, Let's quit trying to, to repent of these things by our own power. I, I know for me, I will fail every time. How about you? Let's not repent in our own power because it's hopeless. Let's quit even looking to the thing, whether it's, it's an attitude or maybe I, I, I or you are bitter against somebody and we cannot, we can't repent um, from our attitude towards this person. And we say, God, I, I, I'm, I'm too weak. Or maybe it represents an, um, a habit that you can't turn your back on. You have no power. My friends, let's just admit to Jesus Christ, we have no power. But Father, thank you for Jesus who lives in me, the hope of glory. Jesus, face that for me. Face that temptation for me. Be the Lion of Judah. Take care of it for me. Take it out of my life for me. Jesus is ready today. If this is your desire, then just please put your hand up to God and let's pray. Dear God in heaven, forgive me and forgive us for making you weep so many times with our lack of repentance. God, search my heart, search our hearts online right now and give us the joy of looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In the word it says, repent. And you never tell us to do something that's impossible. So, God, we look to Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus, you be the strength to repent. You be our power to repent right now. You be our peace of repentance right now. And bless the delegates today as they meet together. Let there be such a, a spirit of repentance. <laughs> God bless you and keep you every day, everybody. Have an awesome day. And when we meet together again at five o'clock Eastern time, it will be how the Holy Spirit help the believers care for each other. Thanks. God bless you. God bless.